Sure. We ready, Anna? Anna, all set? Great, thanks. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm Chris Ozick. I'm the Associate Director at Urban Resource Initiative. Uh, we plant trees around the city, and uh, we're hosting these environmental experts each week. And this week, we're going to learn about toilet paper and uh, all different types of paper products and where they come from. Uh, we're lucky enough to have Mike Perucci, who's been doing uh, forest management for over 42 years. Uh, his experience is in forestry planning, forest certification, cert certification, um, certification, <laughs> and a harvesting forest uh, while protecting the resources. And he's worked all over New England and in the northern United States. He's been doing this for 37 years in four different countries. And he's taught at the Yale School of Forestry uh, since 1995. And he's a member of the Society of American Foresters since 1978. So Mike, you probably have spent more time in the forest than I've been alive, which is definitely saying something. And I am super jealous. Um, so I'm really interested to, to hear what you have to say. A little housekeeping is that um, Mike's going to talk for about 15 minutes. And if uh, people have questions, they can uh, put it in the chat box. Um, and then after his uh, uh, lecture uh, for 15 minutes, we'll open it up for discussion where people can uh, open up their mics and uh, have a conversation, very casual. Um, and uh, or we'll just answer any of the questions that people have typed in. Um, so with that, Mike, it's your show. Thanks. Well, thank you, Chris. And thank you to everyone who's um, zoomed in and is participating. Um, it's really exciting to have a chance to talk to you a little bit about um, forests and what we get from them. So some of you may remember a few weeks ago when there was a shortage of paper towels for washing our hands and toilet paper. Um, that shortage may still be continuing in some places, but mostly um, the companies that make these products have, um, have made more and um, I think the shortage is over. But um, I want you to be thinking about this question that's on the screen because I'm gonna, you're going to have an opportunity to, to type your answers into the chat box. Um, so where do paper towels and toilet paper come from? Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, we had a shortage of toilet paper, and um, I saw some pictures on the internet that I thought you might be interested in. Um, some folks decided to wrap themselves up in toilet paper, apparently, for Halloween, and you can see that um, in at least one place you could play an arcade game and try to snag yourself some toilet paper. But it, um, it, it is a serious question and um, I want to see your answers. Let's go to the next slide. So where do they come from? Think of your answers and chat them in. We'll give you a moment or two. Um, and then we're gonna see how your answers compare to mine because on the next slide, which we're not gonna to go to just yet, um, we're gonna we're gonna see the answers that I came up with in um, after I asked the question without giving it a lot of thought. And I'm told um, by the person who graded my answers this morning, my, my wife, that I didn't necessarily get them right. So we have trees, Softwood trees, we're getting some good answers. Some recycled paper. The Southeast. Bamboo. L lots of good answers. Think, think more broadly. A factory, yeah. I like that one. Um, while the answers are coming in, let's go to the next slide and see what I said when I first considered this question. Got another vote for trees. Well, I say planet Earth. Okay, I, I think that's right. Amazon or Walmart? I'm told not very often from Amazon. Uh, factories, we had some folks say factories. So we've got some similar answers here. Um, forests and trees. Um, 
So how do you think I did? Um, are my answers right? Perhaps, maybe, maybe not. Um, we're gonna use these five answers to help, my five answers to help us find other broader answers for sure. And um, maybe, maybe some of you can be thinking about why I listed forests as different from trees. Are they the same? Maybe, maybe not. So um, we've got a video on the paper making process that may help give us some answers. So in a moment, I think this video, uh, YouTube video will come up. So we can see the finished product here. These happen to be paper towels, I think. And I'm not sure if there's a voice going with this video. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll try to talk through it. Um, we're, we, this um, video is, is courtesy of uh, Georgia Pacific and you can get it online and look at it yourself and see how they talk about it. They're talking about all the different people along the way in terms of how paper is made. Um, and, you know, I said it came from Georgia Pacific, but maybe it comes from Sappy. Are we gonna try again? Okay, so I've, I've lost sight of the video. Sorry, I'm gonna restart that, Mike. I'm trying to get the audio to work. Okay, great. I'll, I'll try one. There are a lot of steps involved in making toilet paper and paper towels or any kind of paper. Sure. And of course- So Mike, why are we waiting? Have you ever made toilet paper yourself? No, I've made paper, but not toilet paper. And I've made paper from paper. And I think lots of school children have done this. You can take paper and mush it up in water and then smooth it out and squeeze the water out and lay it on a flat surface and dry it in the sun and you can turn it back into paper. Um, so you do that make, like with a blender? Sure, a, a blender would work. Um, I, I have to say though, making toilet paper or paper from trees is quite another challenge and, and humans haven't really known how to do that for all that long, just, just a bit over a hundred years. Previously it was made from, from waste um, used cloth and bamboo and other substances, but making it from trees is quite a challenge and this video when it comes on we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, part of the reason is that trees um, which contain the fiber that makes the paper Trees also contain some amazing glues in order to be able to stand up so tall. And those, removing those glues in order to get at the fibers to make paper is uh, quite a challenging process. So I don't think we're gonna get the video, uh, the audio to this. And that's quite all right. Um, I, can, I can try to talk through what's going on. Um, so, so there's some background information from Georgia Pacific about their company um, that's happening here. And then the important thing here is there's a pictures of lots of people that are involved that all have different jobs. Of course, it starts in the forest. This is a picture of a forest in the south. And these are loblolly pine trees. Um, the forests that Georgia Pacific manages are managed under an inspection service called the Sustainable Forestry Initiative. Um, that's called certification. Trees are planted. And then they're tended, they're, they're fertilized and grown and then brought to the mill. Um, you can see the log truck arriving at the mill and then being unloaded by the crane where the, the first steps involve taking the trees off the trucks, getting the bark off them and then chipping or cutting the trees into small chips or flakes. You can see the chips now. Those are yep. sorted and sized. They're also tested to make sure they're the right size. And then a chemical process is used to separate the usable fibers from that glue I was talking about. Um, the, the glues that hold the trees together um, are quite strong and it takes an 
really amazing process with lots of chemicals um, in order to separate them. Um, here we're looking at the digester. Um, and then after they come out of the digester, they're washed. Um, excess um, chemicals are removed. And then they're moved from the pulping process, which is moving, changing the tree to pulp. And they're moved to the paper making process. A giant paper machine, probably the size of the cafeteria in your school or larger, is used to make the paper rolls, which are then cut, it says here, as long as a football field uh, in order to turn that pulp into paper. A lot of the work involved involves removing the water. You can also make paper from recycled, and that slide there, that picture showed how they use recycled materials. One challenge with making paper from recycled materials is removing all of the extra ink and other items that's in recycled paper, as well as any dirt and impurities. Now we see the finished roll. Um, those rolls are then slit down into smaller rolls and then rewound into yet smaller rolls. There's hundreds of different paper mills throughout the United States, and each of them are designed to make different kinds of paper. So some paper mills make paper for bags, for grocery bags or for boxes, and some make paper for writing or printing or decorative uses like wrapping paper, and some make paper towels and toilet paper. And even others make something called fluff pulp, which is used in disposable diapers for, for babies um, and lots and lots of other uses. So there's the end product. <clears throat> and some of the people that are involved in doing this work, including foresters, chemists, engineers, machine operators, truck drivers, um, and um, safety folks that do this work from, from a variety of backgrounds. Using forests and making things out of them is a big part of the U.S. economy. Somewhere in the order of one in ten, 10 jobs have something to do with the forest and things that come from the forest are how we, we um, manage forests and make sure that they're, they're grown. And I would encourage you to have a look at this um, YouTube and listen to their narration and see how I did. I think we can get back to the slides, Colleen. That was, a, that was great narration, and uh, the people in the video look pretty happy. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, you know, um, I do a lot of work where I travel to paper mills and, um, and interview folks to make sure that they're, they're properly cared for, they're, they're paid correctly, they're um, safe, um, they have um, the right educational background. This is all part of the inspection work that I do that's called certification. And I'll tell you, um, Chris, folks in the industry are generally quite happy. In many rural areas, the highest paying jobs and the jobs requiring the most skills are, are jobs in manufacturing. And in our most rural areas in the, in, the, in the U.S., where there are lots of trees and forests and some farms, the only manufacturing is, is making pulp and paper or logs. And um, folks in, the, in those fields are paid on average, quite a bit more than, than other jobs. And so, yeah, they're happy because they've got safe jobs and they've got steady jobs and they're happy um, also because they're paid well, which is important. Um, so you remember back to my answers, where does paper come from? Um, well, my first answer is was planet Earth. And uh, I, I wanted to um, just say something about What's so special about planet Earth? Because to our knowledge at this point, trees are unique to Earth. Certainly none of the other planets in the solar system have trees, and it's not yet known whether trees might exist on, in other solar systems. Um, and there's, there's a reason. What's so special about planet Earth? Well, obviously um, we live here, and trees can live here, and they can live here because there's lots of water in planet Earth. We also have temperatures where water, H2O, exists as a liquid. In other places, it's too hot for it to be a liquid and it's only in vapor form. In other places, it's too cold for it to be a liquid and it's only frozen and it would be very difficult for trees um, 
to live in a place where there's no liquid water. We have moderate climates on planet Earth, but they're also dynamic. Big word. Dynamic means always changing. Our climates are always changing, our weather changes. And in response to those changes, we have in partial response, we have plant life, animal life, intelligent life on Earth. And so I wanted to just dig into this item about planet Earth before we open things up to questions. Can we go to the next slide? So remember I talked about trees and paper and toilet paper comes from trees. Well, what's so special about a tree? Um, hey, I've worked in forests and trees for a lot of years. And so if, if you don't already know what's so special about a tree, then we, we do need to have a longer talk. But I wanna just summarize by saying there are lots of forests and many types of products, lots of stuff that we get from trees. So I wanna ask for a chat again. I want folks to give a list of some of the other things that we get from trees besides paper, and then we're ready to have a conversation. But first, let's see what we get in the chat. Maple syrup, shade, fruit, great answers so far. I'm gonna give you a little more time to type. Um, I recently gave a list, boxes. I recently gave a list that someone else had compiled of things that come from trees um, and forests um, to the students in my course uh, that went on the southern field trip and it was eight pages long building products um furniture clean oxygen yes let's not forget about that that's very important water wow the answers are coming in nuts let's think about paper products i'm going to name a couple um corrugated cartons big brown boxes folding cartons things like Toothpaste comes in and cereal, leaves, coffee, a fun structure to climb, wood pallets for shipping. We also have wrapping paper, decorative paper, paper used to wrap tea bags. Hey guys, we could do this for an hour and we wouldn't be done. Habitat for bugs and insects, wallpaper, tr tree houses, buildings. Great answers. Keep, keep putting the answers in. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this slide is my last one, and I'm not gonna talk about these points on this slide unless um, someone asks me. Um, you can read them yourselves, but I'm open to having a discussion um, and answer questions. And so perhaps we can unmute the students. The students feel free to ask your questions verbally um, or type them into the um, chat. So I'm ready to try to answer questions. Mike, this is Seth in the library. If if we were like the French and everybody had a bidet, would that be a, a plus savings? I mean, if you didn't, wouldn't have to use toilet paper? Yes. Yeah, so um, great question. And, and and certainly we would we would use far, far less of it We'd use a lot more water though. Okay. And I'm told by folks who study this, and it's not my field, but I'm told by folks who study this that water is going to be the next environmental challenge. Okay. Um, you could almost say in the last 50 years, while we've had lots of environmental challenges, we've, we've really focused more attention on air quality and clean air than many of the others, and done a lot of great things globally with air, but water. Water quality, water scarcity is probably going to be the next environmental issue. But I really like that question. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I see on the screen that um, folks are muted. If you want to ask a question, you have to unmute yourself or type it into the um, into the chat box. So, Mike, Matt, uh, go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say the. Uh, uh, the difference between Connecticut trees, Maine trees, and Southern trees for, for making toilet paper? Great question. So um, where does the, and that, um, thank you, Chris, that couples nicely with the question from Matt. 
about where does most of our toilet paper in the Northeast come from? Well, most of the toilet paper in the US actually comes from the Southeast, but some of it comes from Canada and, and Maine. Um, none of the trees in Connecticut are used to make toilet paper. Not that they couldn't, but um, our, our forests in Connecticut are dominated by slower growing um, hardwood trees that have different characteristics. And while hardwood trees are useful in making certain kinds of paper, they tend to be used to make um, writing paper and printing paper, like goes into books, magazines, and newspapers, or Xerox paper. Um, the fibers in hardwood trees are shorter. They're not quite as strong. You need longer, stronger fibers for something like toilet paper, paper towels. Um, so Connecticut's trees are made into lots of products, um, but they tend to be more made into lumber products rather than paper products. And our, our toilet paper, the toilet paper that you buy, is probably coming from the South, although Scott paper towels and toilet paper that comes from, um, well, Irving has a brand. I'm not sure if it's Scott or some other brand. And Irving paper in Canada and, and Maine does make some toilet paper out of New England trees. Most of New England's paper, though, is, is used for writing and printing and not for toilet paper. Um, I see somebody has explained what a, what a bidet is. Um, great. Um, can I, Mike, can I ask you to explain, when you say hardwood tree and softwood tree, what do you mean? Um, sure, thanks. That's a great question. So that's shorthand for um, angiosperms and gymnosperms. Um, so hardwood trees are angiosperms. They tend to be more complex organisms um, and they generally have broad leaves which drop each year. Um, so uh, some folks think of hardwood trees as deciduous trees because they drop their leaves each year. Um, um, softwood trees, my shorthand, are really often people think of them as evergreens. They're pine trees, spruce trees that have needles and those are um, scientifically um, called gymnosperms. Um, softwood trees, the evergreens, ha are, are a more primitive and older form of life. They have longer fibers and fibers arranged in different ways that make for strength characteristics in paper. And hardwood trees have shorter fibers that make for smoothness characteristics and some paper is made from a combination of both depending on the needs for that particular paper. Do we Thank have, you. You're welcome. Do, do we have other questions about about forests? I, one thing that should come to mind is with 330 million people in the US, we're using a lot of toilet paper. Um, so we have a question, are rubber trees from Connecticut? No, rubber trees grow in warmer places. And so we do not get, um, we do not grow rubber trees outdoors in Connecticut, but I really like that question. Why did we have a toilet paper shortage last month? That is a great question. I wanna know, I wanna know what other people think about that. I'm gonna give folks a moment to type in their answers as to why did we have a toilet paper shortage last month. Um, I can kind of understand why we had a paper towel shortage. Let's think about what happened with the COVID virus. The first thing we were told, and we're all hopefully still doing it, is to wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. And, and we started to do more hand washing and we used more paper towels. So one answer, all the people bought it all up. That's why we had a shortage and that, that is a great answer. Um, it, that comes from my oldest grandson, Ben Ferrucci, and I, and I like that answer. I'm not sure that um, everyone agrees, but I think that's probably the answer. Some, for some reason, folks came to the conclusion sort of all at the same time that there was going to be a shortage of toilet paper. So they went and they bought extra and by everyone buying it all extra all at once, there became somewhat artificial shortage in that um, people were doing a little bit of hoarding. Um, a more, um, another issue, which I think is part of it, is um, 
we, there's a mention of lag between supply and demand. There was an increased demand, and it takes a while for an increased supply to show up. There was also a demand for a different kind of toilet paper. Um, folks were switching um, from commercial toilet paper, in other words, the in offices, factories, and stores and restaurants, they use different brands and sometimes different styles, different shapes of rolls. There was an immediate shift to residential, the, the individual smaller rolls. Um, another answer, um, it was one of the, and this is more to human behavior, it was one of the only things people felt they had control over and they could buy a lot of. Like when a disaster happens and folks go to the store. I, I, I think that's an important answer too. Uh, people I think stayed it, I think home, it, their home bathrooms more. Um, all great answers, thanks. It's the one thing we use every day from the grocery store. So I think people felt like it was one thing that they could not live without. Yeah, well, could we live without toilet paper? So if we didn't have toilet paper, what would we use? Well, maybe we'd go to paper towels, right? Um, but if there's a shortage of paper towels, then what comes next? Um, and it clogs up the toilet. <laughs> and paper towels are not good for the toilet, uh, for sure. What did, what did people use before toilet paper? I, I'm told that leaves, and if anyone's been camping and uh, found themselves indisposed and without um, toilet paper, they will know, I'm told this, that using leaves is not so comfortable, but it can work. My, guy, my, my 91 year old mom talks about leaves. <laughs> I, I know she asked me to travel during this time, and I said, no, I'm not stopping in places. And she said, there's leaves on the side of the road. No way. No way. <laughs> but she's 91 years old, so there may be a time that that was what they used. Oh, no, no question. Um, so some folks are saying newspaper, although a digital newspaper won't work. I like that. Um, uh, and, and, and someone else re response that during one crisis, the Times began printing extra pages so people could use them if they ran out. Um, and an answer about from the Soviet Union, folks use cut up newspapers, and it wasn't the best scenario. Um, I'll tell you something else about toilet paper that if you travel to Europe, you'll find their toilet paper isn't the same as ours. And conversely, some folks from from Europe that visit the US and like our toilet paper better, it, it is softer and stronger, um, will buy up rolls and bring them back to Europe with them because they can't get the same quality um, in Europe that we, we have in the US. I wonder why that is. So we have a great question. Um, what is the best toilet paper for the environment? Um, I'll tell you that I don't know the answer, but I know how to think about the answer. And unfortunately, it's not going to give us a solution on, in the short run and maybe never. Um, but let's explore this. So there are some problems with making trees into paper. I said that the trees are very strong and they hold the fibers tightly with a form of glue. Um, the lignans inside the wood cells. The chemicals used to make paper are harsh and, and there's much effort made in paper mills to keep those chemicals out of the environment, but inevitably small amounts of those chemicals make it into the larger environment. One of the harshest chemicals used in making paper are, involves chemicals to turn the, the pulp fiber from the off-white color to brownish color to white. And so in general, if we wanna make paper use better for the environment, we'd get used to using paper that wasn't quite so bright white and even accept brownish colored paper. Now, people have been told that for a good long time, but it's very, very difficult to get consumers to accept paper that's not white. And I just can't imagine people are gonna be real excited about using toilet paper that's brown when they take it out of the package. Um, so um, other, other answers for what's the best toilet paper for the environment can't come from me because I've told you what I know about that. Mike? What about recy recycled uh, products? And when you see it says has 
uh, post-consumer uh, recycled products in the toilet paper, when they make that, is that is that a uh, more complicated process? You were saying with the inks and stuff, um, is that actually better for the environment or not? It's a debatable question. Um, re re recycled paper um, for use in making uh, large, heavy duty brown corrugated boxes is fine because it doesn't have to be cleaned up particularly um, as much. But to try to take recycled ingredients and make them into white toilet paper involves even more chemical processing. And, and I would have my doubts as to whether recycled paper um, content in toilet paper is, is in fact better for the environment. Um, one, one aspect of this question has to do with, is, is cutting down trees to make toilet paper good for the environment? And an answer that I would give is that it's, it's, it is in many places very good for the environment because in many places where we grow trees and cut them to make toilet paper and other forms of paper, if we didn't cut those trees to make paper, the folks who own the land would just convert the forest to farmland and grow different kinds of crops and um, or pasture land for, um, for cows. Um, and it turns out that as long as we have enough food and we have enough farmland in a given area, that it's actually better for water quality and for our oxygen to have a forest in a piece of land than to have a farm. Farming is really hard on the environment and hard on water. Um, so certainly I, I'd encourage folks to use as little as they can get by with and not, and not consume extra, but nobody should feel guilty about using paper or toilet paper, in my opinion, um, because the forests they come from are well cared for, um, especially if those forests are certified, then we know they, they're well cared for. Certification, I mentioned, is an inspection service, and you, you can look for products that are listed as certified as having been sustainably sourced from sustainable managed forests. And so one thing that you can do to help the environment is when you buy products that you know come from the forest, try to buy the products that have an inspection service that does, says they're certified. You'd see initials FSC or SFI, and those tell you that the forests have been managed correctly and that the people who work in those forests are, are being taken care of and are safe. Great. Uh, there was a previous question from, uh, I think it's uh, Stin. To what extent are single trees used for multiple products? Great. Um, yeah, so most of the time when a tree is cut down, it's not made into just a single product. An exception would be some trees are so small or otherwise crooked that they can't be, or the wrong species, they can't be made into much of anything else. And so they're just used in, in their entirety for fuel, um, say for cooking stoves or um, firewood for heating. Um, but most trees are actually divided into different parts and the largest part of the tree might be sawn up on a sawmill and made into boards. And smaller parts of the tree might be made into plywood or um, chipboard or panels and smaller pieces still might be made into paper. And so it is not uncommon for a, an individual tree to ultimately find its home in, in four or five products. The bark is often chipped off. Remember when they were making the paper in that, in that video, they, they, they brought the logs to the mill and then they were debarked, I said. The bark was taken off. That bark is put in bags and sold as mulch. Home Depot, Lowe's, lots of other stores. You can buy uh, landscape mulch and you take those chips and put them down around flowers and plants and it helps prevent weeds and conserve um, soil moisture. We've got a comment from somebody who's used recycled toilet paper that it's great, even if it is beige, um, so a lighter shade of brown. The only problem is it's so expensive. And that's a, yeah. 
an, an interesting point. I wonder why it is so expensive. I see at least one of our observers is using his paper to make a paper airplane. So there's another product we hadn't mentioned is paper airplanes. Mike, is um, softwood generally faster growing than hardwood or does it just depend on the type of tree? Well, it depends on the type of tree, but in general, our softwoods are faster growing than, than our hardwoods. But there are exceptions. The eucalypts um, that come from Australia, the eucalyptus trees, some varieties of eucalypts are extraordinarily fast growing. But on average, typically our softwood trees uh, grow faster. And softwood trees, the pine trees, if we will, or the evergreens, um, often grow in environments that are um, under some kind of challenge. Uh, a place with lots of fire, a place with very, very dry soils, some places with very, very wet soils. The extremes tend to um, favor the, the more primitive and in some ways more rugged um, evergreens or softwoods. And finer quality growing sites, places where you could grow food and where we often grow cities and towns, often are the very places where hardwoods grow quite well. Um, so there's a question yeah. about bamboo. Does somebody on this call know something about bamboo? Uh, Leslie, who's asking it, has some bamboo in her backyard uh, and it grows very quickly. But it might uh, lead to the question, like in, in uh, Asia or other countries, do they use bamboo for toilet paper or other types of products? Yes, in fact, bamboo can be made into paper and it can be used for buildings. It can be used for quite a few of the things that you use um, wood-based products for. Um, a number of years ago, there was a movement to replace um, forests as a source of paper making with bamboo. And some interesting work has been done on that question. I think one of the more interesting papers on that was by a group called the Dovetail Partners. So you could look up Dovetail, Dove like a bird, Dovetail Partners uh, Bamboo. And um, one of the points they made, if you think about what's the most iconic conservation image in the world, the most commonly seen sort of animal when we think about conservation is, anyone know? Panda bear. Panda bear, and what a panda bear, where do panda bears live and what do they eat? So uh, bamboo, of course, is closely associated with panda bears. And, and so if we decide we're going to cut a lot of bamboo and, and make it into paper all in a hurry, somebody's got to think about the panda bears for sure. Uh, bamboo makes um, great flooring, as was pointed out. Um, hemp as an alternative, the fibers in hemp um, can be made into paper. And, and lots of other things. And so that's another alternative as well. And, and I'm all for exploring alternatives. I don't, I don't think there's any particular reason why we have to make all our paper out of trees. I will say that we've got worldwide many, many, many millions of acres of trees um, growing already. And those trees produce lots of other benefits, not just the products, but you, you all listed them earlier, clean air, oxygen, clean water, places for wildlife to live, places where medicinal plants grow. Um, forests can be sustain lots and lots of different items, while at the same time on a periodic basis, cutting some of those trees that are within the forests to make products. I'm not so sure about devoting millions of acres to hemp or bamboo um, in order to grow. I think you're frozen. Product uh, and plants will create, oxygen, will create oxygen. I'm not quite sure, so sure what they would do about the water quality. Um, Great. Guys, I think Another we're question. getting close to the end, so we'll need to squeeze in our last few questions. Um, as we can. Um, Colleen, can you go to my um, last slide just briefly? I want to see if we covered some of the questions that um, you had suggested we might talk about. I think we might have gotten most of them. I have one about the, uh, the forest when they're being harvested. How do they uh, manage all the animals and insects and things in the forest as they're cutting them? 
um, to, to manage for habitat? Yeah, no, great question. So first, it is not possible um, in a sort of Buddhist way to imagine that we could go into a forest and cut gigantic trees and not harm anything. There are gonna be some insects and maybe even some animals that are, are not nimble enough to get out of the way and they're, and they're, they're, gonna, be, they're gonna be harmed. And there's no, there's no avoiding that. But for the most part, the animals, the birds and the wildlife, they move about in the environment in order to get the different things that they need. And they don't tend to stay in one place all the time. So what foresters will do to protect the wildlife is to only cut a portion of the forest in a given year um, and leave adjoining or adjacent forests uncut for the wildlife to shift to, and then they shift back. There are also some species that um, will, of animals, wildlife, birds in particular, that will not live or thrive in just a forest of just one age. And so when we cut the part of the forest down, we create a forest with different ages. There may be some baby forests and some teenage forests and some middle-aged forests and some older forests. And some species of birds, I think of wild turkeys, for example, need a little bit of each of those in order to survive. Thank you, Colleen. So um, one of the questions we asked about is forest plantations. So a plantation, a forest plantation is a planted forest. It's been planted by people generally to harvest. And that's what we see mostly in the US South. Here in New England, in Connecticut, very few of our forests outside of the cities were planted. Our urban forests are often planted, but when you get outside of the cities into the countryside in Connecticut, people didn't plant those trees. Um, those trees regrew naturally from seed that was available from other trees and grew on their own. But we grow plantations in the U.S. South in part because there was surplus land after um, the cotton and tobacco um, uses ran out on some of these lands. Cotton, growing, growing cotton in the U.S. South and growing tobacco in the U.S. South could be really hard on the soils. And after some time of growing those crops, the farms were abandoned and trees grew back. Um, those trees were cut back in the 30s, 20s, and 30s, and it was in teens. And it was, so 100 years ago or so, those, those trees started to be cut. And um, then it was realized, hey, if we plant them, we can get the trees back faster and we can grow them and, and, and harvest them again. And so this idea of planting trees to grow um, products and to grow forests is what's behind the idea of plantations. It, the idea was invented in other cultures and other places, predominantly Europe and Asia, but it's been perfected and made a huge enterprise, largely in the U.S. South. Um, Yes. Yeah, so, Chris, did I answer the question about the wildlife habitat cl clearly enough? I've, I've previously yeah, yeah. Had... great. I, um, I, I think I think this has been fantastic. Um, I learned a lot, uh, and you know, um, I think everybody here learned a lot, and is probably going to be a little bit more conscientious uh, when they're using any of our paper products. And uh, really, much thanks to you and everybody for participating today. Um, next week, we're going to have uh, Laura Green, who I saw was on the call today. Uh, she's going to be talking about the value of small plants. Um, so please join in. I'm really interested in that. And um, any, any comments from the gallery for Mike? Thank you. Anybody have, have anything they want to say? Thank you. You're welcome, guys. That was fun. I really enjoyed it, and I liked your questions and also your answers. I think you gave a better set of answers than I did about where toilet paper and paper towels come from. I enjoyed it. You all right, have a good you. day. Thank you. See you all, all next right. week. Bye, everyone. Thank you.